Poncharenko. He's a member of Ukraine's parliament. He's joining us at this hour. I, I think the first and obvious question is, how is your country doing? It's tough. We are fighting. We are fighting successfully. But uh, the price, the victims are so awful. And the last attack in Kramatorsk railway station was so awful. I know this railway station very good in Kramatorsk works to one of my Goncharenko centers throughout the whole country, which were educational, cultural, now volunteer hubs. So I was at this uh, city and at this railway station many times in my life. And just to imagine that it could be hit by missile when there were thousands of civilians, it is so awful and cynical from Russians. Because the, the day before yesterday, they attacked railway and that's why so many people were trapped in the city. So they were waiting for their trains, couldn't evacuate. Almost 4,000 people, and that were mainly women and children and aged people, were waiting for their trains. And what Russians did after this? They hit the train station itself, rain, railway station itself. And now we have like this awful number of killed people. I think that is one more uh, example of how Russia understands uh, what does it mean, Ruski Mir, Russian world, like Putin is saying it. It's just killing, killing, and one more time killing. Alexei Goncharenko joining us as we continue our coverage here on the crisis in Ukraine. Uh, I, I think, obviously, people are disgusted by what you just talked about, this idea of civilians in the line of fire, women and children as well. Uh, there's anger building globally, and yet I'm just wondering, uh, are your countrymen, is your government getting the resources and the help that it needs? Yes, uh, thank you very much for all who support us, and that's extremely important for us. A lot of uh, is done, but more should be done. Yes, finally, we are receiving uh, really strong air defense systems, but one S-300 uh, division, it's not enough for us. And uh, the big battle, at least in Ukraine, is uh, uh, going to start in the next days, and that means that we need as much heavy weapons as it is possible. Uh, that's why we need more, more weapons, and certainly we need more sanctions against Russia. Russia should be disconnected from the SWIFT system. That is something which was said at the beginning, that it will be done, but in reality it is not done. Only seven Russian banks, which makes only 15 percent of Russian financial system, is really disconnected from the world uh, financial transaction system. It's not right. It's, uh, it means that this sanction is really fake sanction, and we need a real sanction. So I think that is the moment when uh, this uh, swift uh, disconnection and cutoff of Russia should be provided in reality. I can tell you yesterday there were European parliamentarians, members of the parliament, from 11 nations. Uh, together I was with them. We showed them Bucha and Hostomil in the Irpin area. And they were literally uh, crying, seeing these mass graves, seeing these awful atrocities, seeing raped women, and they were just crying. So I think that is the moment when we should stop this evil, which is Putin, and to show that the free world can unite around Ukraine and stop such dictators. Incredible language there by Alexei Goncharenko. He's talking about evil, mass graves, uh, slaughter, effectively genocide happening uh, throughout his country. Uh, I want to bring back in my colleague, uh, Alexei, if you wouldn't mind. I just want to welcome Griff Jenkins into our conversation. I believe Griff has a question for you as well. Griff? Yeah, Alex, you and I spoke here in Lviv, where I am, just days ago, and now you're back out in the field and we're learning from the Pentagon that Slovakia has given Ukraine at least one S-300 surface-to-air missile defense system. Are you encouraged that the West is beginning to see this war and the challenges ahead from the Ukrainian perspective? Yes, definitely. Uh, we, are, we, are, we see this support. Yesterday I spoke with Deputy Speaker of Slovakian Parliament. Uh, also with the head of Defensive Committee of European Parliament, Natalie Loiseau. And uh, yes, we uh, appreciate this help. But once again, uh, more should be done, more, because uh, Russia 
is also concentrating, mobilizing their resources. They tried to take Ukraine, you know, quickly. They failed, but now they are preparing a big, big assault. And also just watch what's happening in Mariupol, half million population city, which is attacked and almost flattened uh, and devastated by Russians. And also having a heavier weapons, Ukraine could deblock Mariupol and save thousands, thousands of lives, which are now, they are under great risk and many people are already killed. So we need armored vehicles, we need aircrafts, we need uh, all um, artillery, heavy artillery, which is possible. And we're really desperately asking for this. There are examples, for example, Germany, they just refused to sell to Ukraine uh, their armored vehicles, murders. And instead of this, they are now going to utilize it, paying for utilization of them. Just imagine. I think it's not the right way to act. Just incredible story there. Griff, thank you for the question. Alexei, obviously, uh, we're wishing the very best for you, for your countrymen. We appreciate you joining us tonight as we continue our coverage. Thank, thank you, you very again. much. Thank you for covering. Thank you for covering. We appreciate it.